Welcome to Car Free Conversations. This is a podcast where we talk about making the most of St. Pete without the use of a car. I'm Domenico. And I'm Sumitra. And today we are uh, welcoming Ray Delahanty on our podcast. Uh, he is the uh, the voice of the YouTube channel City Nerd um, on YouTube and also Nebula, which we'll talk about later on. Um, before we talk about the the uh we, before we talk about city nerd we're gonna have a little uh icebreaker this is a special jeopardy round that we've put together for ray um it's just a fun little thing um hello ray hey how's it going good 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 um all right so let's start this jeopardy round and then we'll get into talking about you and your channel and uh and your recent visit to st pete which i'm very excited to talk about um we have three categories for you to choose from, Ray. So we we have around the world, that's international transit trivia, coast to coast, that's national transit history. And then we have your digital safari, which is uh, which is City Nerd trivia uh, from your channel. Uh, so we're quizzing you on your own content, which I think will be really fun. So which 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 question do you want first from which category? Uh, how many how many questions are there in each category? We have three in each category. Ooh, okay. Well, let's do around the world first. All right, around the world. Uh, do I have to select a dollar amount or <laughs> no? We'll just randomly assign dollar amounts yeah. to each and, and do I have to phrase in the form of a question? Yes, of course. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Of course, we can so do it. You know the rules. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> okay. First one. Um, this is for five hundred dollars. Uh, like literally, yeah. <laughs> Sweet. I know he's gonna make money no, off this. This is awesome. These points have no redemption value. Yeah. <laughs> okay. By the way, yes. we should we should leave that. They're, to like, they're like five hundred car free St. Pete dollars. So. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'll, I'll Google the uh, conversion rate <laughs> on that. Here in Pinellas County, a transit pass is called the Flamingo Card. In Seattle, it's the Orca card. In Bangkok, it's called the Rabbit card. And two episodes ago, we mentioned Hong Kong's Octopus card. This international city offers transit riders an Oyster card. That's the, that's the question. Uh, yeah. What is London? So, yep, you got it. Yes. Cool. Wow. I've got one of those somewhere. I don't know. No, never mind. I, like like anybody, I, I collect. Yeah, I cards. I also have like just a purse with transit cards in it. Yeah, <laughs> nice. All right, okay. I'm going to ask you another question from that same category. Right, okay, right? sounds good. Yeah. All right, this city officially named one of its streetcars the South Lake Union Line, but locals know it as the South Lake Union Trolley with the unfortunate acronym S L U T. <laughs> what is Seattle? Yes. <laughs> yeah, well, your stuff. Uh, they, yeah, they sell good t-shirts for that too. So. Yeah, yeah. I loved when I lived there, I loved it. I thought uh, <laughs> should we continue with this category? Sure. Yeah. Uh so this is the last question in this category. The city is home to Africa's only subway system. Oh. Uh, wow, I actually don't know something. this, and there are a lot of good, yeah, guesses. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna say, uh, see, what is Cairo? You're not, yeah. You got it. That's right. Okay, good. I thought it was right because I'm pretty sure I looked at it at some point, and it's like, oh yeah, there are subways there. But also surprising because I would think that either Johannesburg or Pretoria would have them too. Yeah, or like Nairobi would have them too. But yeah. yeah, or maybe like Casablanca. Right. That's like true. anywhere. Yeah, because like they have high speed rail, yeah. so you would think yeah. maybe they would also have. Well, Casablanca has streetcars, but they're just not under. They don't have subways, right? Yeah. yeah. All right, what's your next category, Ray? We've got around the world or your digital safari. No, we oh, just, I just I did we, around the world. We just did oh, sorry. Did your digital safari or coast to coast? Uh well, let's go to digital safari. 
All right, let's we'll, do it. We'll come back to Coast to Coast. <laughs> this is fun. We could just do this for the whole hour. I love this. <laughs> <laughs> All right. In your top 10 list of North America's best airports, transit connections, this airport ranked at number five, a tie with Mexico City. Name the airport and bonus the travel time from the airport transit station to the city center. Oh, I don't. Yeah, wow. that's that's like the that's like one of the first five videos I ever made. And <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I struggle. I struggle to remember. Yeah, like, like I'm, I'm definitely not going to get this correct, but I'll, I will guess. Um, uh, I guess Atlanta and then I'm going to say. 22 minutes well you almost got the minutes right it's 24 minutes and it, but it's chicago midway ah uh, okay okay that's good should we continue, i know should we continue with this category yeah sure the city clinched the top spot from new york city in your video u.s cities where people drive the least oh <laughs> See, I make so many videos. I can never remember what's in my videos. The U.S. cities that drive the least, and it's not New York. Which was surprising. Uh, I don't know. Is it um? Is it is it San Juan? Yeah. Oh, what is San Juan? What is San Juan, Puerto Rico? But yeah. Okay. It, it, also, it was very surprising to me, but also it makes sense when I think about it. Yeah. 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 All right, I'm going to give you another question in this category. In your top, I'm sorry, in your video of top 10 U.S. cities with underrated livability, walkability, and transit, this city ranked number four. Four? <laughs> uh, I don't remember that. I, I think that's still my most viewed question. video. question. Like, I, I, know, I know what number one, or one and two are, and I think I might know what number three is. But boy, I'm going to struggle. That would have been too easy if we asked you for the number one. Um. Yeah. What is uh? What is Minneapolis? New Orleans. New Orleans. That was fourth, huh? Okay. Yeah, I remember that being on there, but I couldn't remember. Yeah, I I, I think I remembered the top three. Um. Yeah, and it would have struggled to number four. You picked a good one to to stump me for sure. <laughs> Top three were Chicago, Pittsburgh, Pitt Philadelphia. and Philadelphia. Yeah, yeah, I know that. I remember the top three because they they keep popping back up over and mm -hmm. over in yeah. in other similar kinds of lists. So, well, good job, Sumitra, on stumping Ray. Sumitra <laughs> with those questions. Yeah, yeah. If you'd asked me one, two, or three on that on that video, I would have been able to tell well, you. If I couldn't remember four. Yeah, I was also like, oh, I think the one, two, or three are kind of obvious in a way, and so I was like, oh, the fourth one was kind of yeah. Okay to me nice okay can we still do the other category yeah let's do it go ahead samitra it's your turn all right so i love trivia is, by the way I, I guess i probably especially love like urbanism transportation trivia but, but i like all kinds of trivia so this is great it's my dream to be on actual jeopardy no no offense like this is just as, <laughs> just as good here. but but that's my dream uh so this is a national transit history trivia. First question is, fueled by Henry Ford's efforts and cheap gasoline, transit's profitability plummeted through the 1920s. But this American city was ahead of its time when it launched the very first municipal railway system in 1912. Uh, first municipal. Uh, what is Los Angeles? Close. It was San Francisco. It was. Oh, okay. Okay. Which is again I'm surprised by, but again, it's municipal railway, whereas right. like, with private railway is all over the place. Right. Right. Yeah. Well, it's interesting when I was reading about this because, <clears throat> like, they were all pri pretty much all private until like late, much later on, like a few decades after this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. San Francisco. Yeah. Yeah, because they're all they're all built as part of like development mm -hmm. schemes right i mean they were they were, they were how you got people to the the, the new sub subdivisions and the streetcar yeah. suburbs right yeah all right next question for 500 uh 
uh, what are we calling it, Samitra? Uh, Our yeah. Our powers. <laughs> he would later go on to co-found Standard Oil with John D. Rockefeller. But this American industrialist was first known for developing the first, I'm sorry, the Florida East Coast Railway, which extended as far south as Key West. Oh. Uh, uh, all right. I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to cheat. <laughs> uh, I feel like Floridians should know this. Fly, is it Flagler? Yeah. Who is Flagler? Flagler? You got it. That's right. Yep. Henry Flagler. So I haven't read it yet, but um oh nice the, the tampa the tampa yimby people gave me this this book about uh That's about cool. flagler and and I, I was aware of flagler before that but i was like oh yeah cool i want to learn more about that and so for, for i those might have been able to come up with it but for those listening online or, or on the radio on on uh sunshine um he uh, ray just held up a book called um it's, was it it's the last train to paradise. Last train to paradise by Les Standiford, Henry Flagler, and the spectacular rise and fall of the railroad that crossed an ocean. I'll have to check that out. Yeah, I'm kind of bummed that that railroad does not go all the way to Key West. That you can't just take a train to Key West. Right, right. Okay, last one. Or to Tampa, right? Like there were like all these street, mm. like all these rail lines that existed all the way in Florida. All yeah. of those. Um. All right, next one. We have actually two more questions. Oh, okay. This New York City subway station, beautifully adorned with colored tiles, was officially closed in 1945. Today, you can visit the abandoned station only by booking a tour with the New York Transit Museum, which has exclusive access. Uh, what is City Hall? Yeah. Yeah. I've always wanted to see it, but I still I know, I haven't. I haven't been down there, um, but yeah, it looks looks beautiful. It does. Yeah, pictures look amazing. All right, for a thousand points, <laughs> a thousand. Oh, this is points now. Sorry, <laughs> right. don't go cheap on me. I want the St. Pete bucks. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know where I can redeem the car free <laughs> dollars. <laughs> Tennessee Williams' modern classic play, A Streetcar Named Desire, was named after an actual public transit line whose terminus station was Desire Street in this American city. Uh, I'd say what is most likely New Orleans. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. Well, you won. Yeah, I did pretty <laughs> well on things that weren't like related to my channel. <laughs> I feel like that's actually good. That means that you're not uh, too, uh, you're not obsessed with your, 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 stuff, no, your own not, I, Like I literally you know, make videos and then I kind of forget about them. Like I can't even, like I, I try to think what video did you make two weeks ago? And like, I literally have to look and look it up and go, oh, like, oh yeah, I remember that. Which is, I think, healthy to uh, yeah. kind of have a relationship with your content. That, yeah. 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 Uh, for those of you just tuning in, this is Car Free Conversations. And today with us, we have Ray Delahanty, uh, city nerd. Um, and we are about to talk about his recent trip to St. Pete and some of the um, some, some of the things he had to say on his channel, um, which you can find on YouTube and on Nebula. Um, first, though, Ray, uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about why you why you started the city nerd channel on on YouTube? Yeah, sure. Um, so it was really a pandemic project, I guess. Um, there was just, a, this is, so this is like, mm, you know, uh, M March, 2020, uh, mm -hmm. if you worked in an office or whatever, they sent you home and you, you went on month after month of like doing like zoom calls at your desk in your home office or whatever. And it was fine. Like I loved the projects that I was working on and, and all that, but it, it kind of, it kind of wore on me. And then there were some other things that happened like during the pandemic that are kind of personal. And I just kind of made a decision to step away from my job. So my background is I, I was a, um, I was a project manager um for like a big infrastructure firm but my background is in transportation planning and some traffic engineering um which really informs what i do on my youtube channel 
Um, <clears throat> anyway, I made a decision to take a sabbatical. Um, I wanted to take like six months off and just like, okay, I don't want to work. And I've actually got this list of things that I kind of want to do at that time. And one of the things was I kind of had, had a notebook with some ideas of some things I either wanted to blog about or whatever. And as it, but during the pandemic, I had like a lot of people, I think I'd probably started watching more YouTube than I had before, just because you're, you're kind of stuck at home all the time and your computer's in front of you. And I kind of thought, oh, YouTube is a good, um, it's a good vehicle for talking about the things I want to talk about, which were things related to kind of the work I did, except there were topics that like I never got to work on because nobody pays you to do a top 10 list, <laughs> whatever, <laughs> right? But those are the kinds of things I would blog about. And I thought, well, it would be hard to blog just because like I just, writing is not that much fun, um, but making YouTube videos might be fun. Um, so I made one. And then I, I kind of talked to myself into, well, I'll make like eight or 10 of them. And I'll try to do them once a week and I'll do that during my sabbatical. And, um, it'll be good just to like, um, just to get, just to document things for myself. It'll like be a weight off my mind and I'll say, oh, at least I'll have done it. And if somebody starts watching my channel, it'll almost be kind of like a bonus. Um, and really, I think like three weeks in. I got an email notification that I got my first subscriber. Um, and I started getting comments on my videos. And then I started getting more subscribers. Um, as part of my sabbatical, um, I went and I kind of traveled around Mexico for four months. Um, and so when I got to Mexico, I had, I think I hit 100 subscribers literally the day I got to Mexico. And then when I left Mexico four months later, I had like, 11,000 or something like wow. that. So, so it was really, it was a really special time. Um, and I really got the sense that, yeah, people are, um, people, like what the things I'm talking about are really resonating with people and, or they might be entertained. I don't know. Like my videos weren't like very good technically yet. They still kind of aren't, but they've improved a lot. Um, but anyway, so that was kind of the genesis of it. And so once, you know, as I was working my way through my list of like 10 ideas, I started accumulating way more because I would read the comments in my videos and like, I would go, oh, that's an interesting thing to pursue or explore. And so, so like at this point, like I still keep the same list of ideas, except for now I have like 800 ideas that I haven't done yet. Um, but anyway, so, so that's kind of the evolution of the channel and like why I started it. Yeah, and you know, you spoke about your urban planning and kind of project management background in in that in that sector. Uh, where do you source the data that you highlight in your videos? I know like it's different for like each video that you make, um, and I know some of it is also from your personal travels as well. Uh, but like, how do you source your data? Yeah, because because I make different kinds of videos. So, like the one that's about. St. Pete. I, I like to make videos where I just go visit a place and I give more of like a qualitative um, <laughs> overview and try to try to think of what story I want to tell about the place I visit. Um, but I also make lots of videos where I use data and analyze it in different ways and create metrics where I can evaluate how cities are doing or metro areas or zip codes or whatever, um, however, however granular I want to get with the the, the geography and usually the data sources I use are either from the US census. So they have things like income and vehicle ownership and what mode people take to get to work. And so those can be useful. And then I also use, um, I like to talk about housing affordability. So I can either use um, Zillow does a, like a Zillow home value index, or they also do like a rent index, but I've been increasingly using, um, there's a company called Dwellsy that contacted me and say, Hey, we'll give you like a huge data set of all the rental properties available and you can sort it by like any geography you want. And so that's been really fun to work with. Like the, the data set has like 600,000 records and it. it's like whatever the active rentals are in like, um, whatever, whatever the most recent month I asked for was. And right now I'm working with like this past October, I'll probably ask them for a refresh soon. Um, and then what else, like I use walk score and bike score sometimes, which have been around for a long time, like probably over 10 years. And, um, what else? There are probably some other things I use too, but there are also things that I just kind of measure myself, um, just using, uh, like some, I've, I've done things where like I measure like the number of, 
uh, freeway miles within like a certain geographic boundary. And th there is a data source for that too, that the federal highways um, puts together every year. So I can use that if, if I'm sticking to like a metro area or whatever, they'll, they'll give you like the number of lane miles of roadway or, or highway or whatever. So those are kind of some of the different Thing. Oh, and the National Transit Database. That's another big one. So the Federal Transit Administration, like there are all kinds of reporting requirements when you have a when you have a transit agency um that gets that gets federal funding. Um and so uh the FTA makes this huge rich data set set publicly available. So you can look at all kinds of metrics related to how a transit system is used and funded and what the ridership is and um, what the efficiency is. Um, so I, I like to use that a lot too. So those are all things that like I've used when I was either consulting or back in like mm -hmm. grad school when, when I was doing like research projects and I became aware of the data set. So I kind of have when, when, it, when there's a question in, a, in my mind, um, I have a pretty, uh, it's, okay. it's pretty oh. intuitive of me to figure out like which, which, which data source to, to go, to go find, to, to generate metrics or whatever. So I want to switch gears a little bit. I want to talk about your recent video that you made, uh, which featured St. Pete, um, our, our humble town, our humble little city uh, that you featured on your YouTube channel. And your YouTube channel, you now have almost uh, 250,000 subscribers, right? It's getting real close to that. Yeah. Which is really impressive. Um, so my, so what, what drew you to make a video um, <laughs> with St. Pete as a subject? Um. So really, uh, I guess even from the outset of my channel, because because like right at the beginning, I was in Mexico, and then um, I think the first full year of the channel after that I went to L.A. and New York, and I'm from Seattle, so so I went to Seattle, and I made videos um, about aspects of those places, and then I did even more of that in 2023, um, and I and I got to realize. Um, if I go to a city and I can explore it for like three or four days and shoot video and photography, and as I'm walking around, kind of, um, build a narrative in my head about the things I'm seeing and do a little bit of research and talk to people too. Um, I try to do that for, for all of these, um, that not only can I make, a what I think is a pretty good video that people seem to respond to well, like that, that type of video does fairly well for me, but also it's just a blast making them because I love to visit cities and think about what makes them different. Um, and I like, uh, I like putting them, to, I like editing them together and figuring out how to use the footage and the images that I, that I shot to, to kind of tell the story that I want to tell and, and give kind of my, my overall impression and the things that I thought were important and different kind of with a global or at least a national audience in mind like a lot of people might not have been to st pete and so i kind of want to give them a sense of what it's like and what what maybe is different about it than what they expect um but also knowing that those tend to get a lot of local traction um yeah. because of the way youtube works like if people google charlotte north carolina like my video might come up or if they live in charlotte like the algorithm might find them more easily um so that's kind of the the genesis of um that uh that's that sort of video that i make but increasingly when i go to a city um i'm not it's not like i'm thinking oh i think i'll go to this city and make a video it's more like there's a reason i have to go to the city and while i'm there i'm gonna make a video and in this case um i got invited out to give the keynote address um for uh, the St. Pete Chamber of Commerce's 125th annual meeting, which was extremely flattering and an honor. Um, um, and, you know, I said, uh, when they approached me about it, I was like, oh, yeah, that that's something I could do. Um, I like, you know, I like speaking to audiences and it's going to give me a chance to travel. And I hadn't been to St. Pete before. Um, and so I told them, yeah, um, uh, but, but I'll probably want to stay out there for like, three or four days so I can do some filming too. Um, and the original idea when, when, uh, when I was thinking about it was, oh yeah, I'll be able to get to St. Pete and Tampa and it may, I can make it, make a video about both cities. And there was just, well, it, it became apparent very quickly that, 
uh, it's not that easy to get between the two cities, which is also part of the video I made, I think. Um, and so like it, it became very obvious that, oh no, there's, there's enough going on in St. Pete where I can just make a video about St. Pete and there's enough to explore, um, where I can just stick around St. Pete for like three days filming and, and, and thinking about what I'm looking at. Um, so that's, that's kind of the reason I ended up there, you know, I was invited there to, to, to give a keynote speech and uh and then i was able to um work on a video while i was there that's i mean that's really cool because i i split my time between st pete and chicago and i was in chicago and i was just on my youtube app and i saw your video but then i saw one of the murals in st pete that i know really well and i was like wait eh. and it was St. Pete and then like it just so like your you know like the YouTube algorithm just knew, knew that I was looking at stuff in St. Pete and knew that yep. I followed your channel and so like it just kind of you know popped it on my YouTube app which is which was kind of really cool um what was your favorite aspect about St. Pete and what was least favorite <laughs> um yeah I mean I kind of uh I think in the video, I kind of emphasize that this was something that really makes it different from every other city. It's just just how fully, I mean, not completely, it's not an island, but it's very much sur surrounded by water in a way that really no other U.S. city is. I mean, maybe San Francisco a little bit, maybe Seattle a little bit, but it really is surrounded by um, the bay mm -hmm. on one side and the Gulf of Mexico on the other side um and you know it's connected to the mainland but but not only that it's also got um you know it's got these lakes and nature preserves in it um and so there's there's definitely a sense that yeah this is um this is a city that has a really strong relationship with um the waterfront all the way around um and it really kind of informs you know it's so important geography geographically as far as the ways the city is laid out and what the possibilities are for connecting different areas with transportation and then not only that but just like the lifestyle um because you're already you're i mean depending where you are obviously but you're always very close to the water um either you know either on the gulf side or the bay side and they're both both of those um environments are are interesting and attractive in different ways and yeah, i know like st pete doesn't literally i mean there, there are there are other communities there right there's like st pete beach or whatever um but 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 still like you have you have all those um kind of waterfront different really different kinds of waterfront environments like right there all around you um in a way that i just don't think any other u.s city really has yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, and they're all diverse because we've got the we've got the beaches on the other side of the barrier islands, and then we have, uh, you know, on this side by downtown, we sort of have this downtown waterfront, and then Gulfport's kind of this like mm -hmm. almost like little harbor type yeah. of town. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I didn't get down to Gulfport unfortunately. It was, it was one of those like, boy, boy, you run out of time fast. I always I always feel like yeah, you know, like three days is a lot of time. It's not very it's not very much time. It's not enough time to see everything you want to see. <laughs> Yeah. But but you know how it is like like people not everybody, but in general, people like sunshine, mm -hmm. and they like going to the beach, um, and they like they like being by the the water. And St. Pete really has all of that, um, in a way that really almost no other U.S. city does. I mean, San Diego is great, but it, but it doesn't it's not it doesn't have that sense of being fully surrounded the way that the way that St. Pete does. It's not. It's it's a it's a strong part of like San Diego's identity, but not I don't think to the same level as it is for St. Pete, um, and, and it's just uh, I I just found that very um, uh, pleasant is the right word. It is, it is pleasant, almost alluring. Um, it's like mm -hmm. oh yeah, this is I can see that why this would be a really great place to live. So you talked about some of the natural sort of features of of St. Pete and what makes it unique. Can you could talk a little bit about? Um, what makes how how St. Pete compares to other cities in terms of public transportation and walkability and, and bike friendliness? And you mentioned you mentioned this in your in your video, which which uh, if you're listening, you can find uh, on YouTube uh, if you search for City Nerd. 
Um, but I was wondering if you could sort of talk talk with us about um, about yeah how you felt about those those aspects of of the city. Yeah, and and I always want to give a caveat on this because I'm not I'm not able to visit like every different yeah. neighborhood in the city, and I realize that um, like like every every U.S. city has inequities in in like what the infrastructure is and what the transit service is in different parts of the city and i probably didn't get to um all the diverse locations in the city that i would want to to give like a full analysis what i do when i visit a city is i'm usually staying downtown because that's the most convenient place to get transportation connections from um and then i'll usually spend you know i want to be efficient with my time and i don't i don't rent a car i don't like taking an uber i like to take public transit or walk or bike if i can bike um and so that largely informs the types of places that i see and that i talk about in my videos and so in the case of saint pete that really meant i'm mostly focused on like the spine of central avenue that runs east and west where you know this you've got the sun sun runner and the Pinellas Trail. Um, and so that really largely informs what I perceived about transit, to, at least in my visit. I'm, I'm kind of aware of what the metrics are as far as ridership. Um, uh, and so there's going to be a little different because um, there's not going to be as much ridership in areas where you have like lower frequency transit services. Um, but you know, the sun runner runs like every 15 minutes. Um, it's, uh, you know, I'd prefer like every 10, if they could do every 10, um, that's a little more convenient. You feel more like you can show up, um, and a bus will be there probably in like, probably in like five minutes, honestly, on, on average, um, if, if it runs every 10 minutes, um, but it might be up to 10 minutes. Right. But, but you always feel like, oh, I could just show up at the bus stop. 15 minutes feels more like, oh, I kind of need to know when the bus is coming. So I don't waste a bunch of my time at the bus stop. So, so that'd be one thing, but like, you know, the vehicles are obvious they're brand new and nice. Um, I, I rode it out to St. Pete beach and back. Um, and and the and the stops are are great. I felt like it's really well designed. Um, I did wonder why they didn't run articulated buses. I've heard yeah. stories about why why that is, but I didn't really confirm them. I didn't want to talk about it in the video. Um, but it looks like the platforms are designed to accommodate that. You know, whenever they can get agreement to actually do that, or they have enough demand or whatever. So, but I, but I enjoyed the Sun Runner. Um, I did because I went south. Um to um well, i can't remember the names of the neighborhood like, like old southeast and yeah. is it mm -hmm. is it Bay, bayview or bayview yeah yeah and I, and I actually walked all the way down to what's, what's the nature park down there on the lake um boyd, oh, hill. boyd hill yeah 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 i went to boyd hill nature so i walked all the way down there and i was kind of running out of time i thought well maybe there's a bus i can catch back and i think it might have been on a sunday so maybe this is unfair but i think it, was, it ran like once an hour and i'm like yeah that's that's not very convenient so the sun runner is great but i realized there's probably a lot of challenges for other routes in on the psta system that aren't the sun runner um yeah, so that was that was the time I had to take an Uber back from <laughs> from where I was because I had I had an appointment I had to keep. Um, and then as far as biking, kind of the same thing. Like the Pinellas Trail is fantastic, mm -hmm. in my opinion. You know, it gets you all the way downtown, and and the way they thread the protected two way bike lane on the First Avenue South um, through downtown, and then connect it to the off street portion as you get into the I don't know whatever if you want to call it the gas plant district or. Um, the area around Tropicana Field, where where the actual rail the rails are still kind yeah. of there. Um, I thought I just think that's really well done. It was being pretty well used, uh, and that was I think I mostly explored that on a Saturday. Um, but yeah, there were lots of people out using it, um, and so that looks great. Um, I'm not as familiar with like what the bike facilities are, like running north and south to other neighborhoods. Um, you know, they're probably not as not as good as that but again um like i'm 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 impressed that that the city is because this is really the way you should do transportation land use planning um you should you should at least start by creating a strong spine where you also um you also uh 
create the conditions for um for adding adding housing density and that's all clearly happening up and down the central corridor <laughs> there's lots of lots of new density there are lots of cranes in there and that's where you have the brt and the yeah. protected bike lanes that that you get that get you east and west so so I, i'm i'm sure uh there are a lot of parts of saint pete that don't have all that um but this is a i think it's a great start and it gives you um it gives you something to build on hopefully and the, the sense i got from um talking to folks at the at the chamber of commerce meeting was that yeah there is a lot of energy around um Built building on um, the successes that that the city's already seeing in the central corridor. I'm I'm just still blown away. Like, what other like major city chamber of commerce is going to invite <laughs> YouTube like urbanist guy who talks about car dependency to to give a keynote at a at a chamber of commerce meeting? Like, I'm waiting for the next city to do that. I don't know if any other city will do that. And so it just impresses me that there's that kind of uh, thinking. Because the Chamber of Commerce in any city um, is extremely influential in in, yeah. in politics, right? And I got to sit next to the mayor too, and that was cool. So I got to I got to hang out with the mayor a little bit. I don't know. I yeah. I'm just like you know, you can't you can't draw too many conclusions. But but you just it, that 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 uh, that just shocked me um, about about St. Pete that that. Uh, that they would think that progressively about land use and transportation, because you just don't see that in practically any U.S. city. Yeah, I know in your video you mentioned about Cross Bay Ferry and how like it was almost inaccessible to go to the to the jetty or the port where it docks in Saint Pete, and uh, and you know like the infrequent service is something that we have all uh, dealt with on that as well do you have anything else to add to that yeah um i don't know because because uh the tampa bay region is i want to use the word unique because because san francisco bay is somewhat similar in the way it's laid out with, with the core cities um and you know obviously san francisco bay is a more a more populous region um but they have pretty good ferry service um both up to marin county and across the bay to oakland they have game day services to both um uh, oracle park where the giants play and to um chase center where the warriors play um and yeah like like at, at peak times i think ferries run like every i don't know 40 minutes or so on that system so actually, when I gave my Chamber of Commerce speech, I, I I gave a few examples of other cities that have viable ferry or water taxi systems, and and that one, that one kind of jumps out. Um, yeah, and and I had wanted to take the Cross Bay ferry when I was in town, but unfortunately, Gasparilla was happening yeah. on the Saturday, and so the Coast Guard <laughs> doesn't allow the ferry to run on Saturday or Sunday, which were the only two days I was going to be able to take the ferry. Um, and so I couldn't take it, but, but I did want to walk down to where, um, the jetty is in St. Pete just to know where it is. And actually, like, I kind of knew in advance cause I, I had looked it up on, on the cross, cross Bay ferry website, but then like, um, when I was kind of in the middle of my day and I thought, okay, this is a good time to go, go take a look at that because I was looking at the schedule thinking, oh yeah, this is when the ferry would be leaving, even though I kind of knew like it wasn't running, um, and and I opened to like Google Maps and 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 asked Google Maps where where the ferry docks and it pointed me to the old location, which is highly convenient. And I wait, walked over there and I was like, wait, there's no ferry there. And I suddenly remembered, oh yeah, it isn't here, is it? It's it's down like south of the airport. Yeah. Well, I'm still gonna walk down there. So there's a part in the video where I actually walk down, walk down, and and of course it's closed because they're not running the service that day but even so like it only it doesn't run what on like monday or tuesday and then it yeah. only runs a couple times on like wednesday and thursday and like three times each way i think if i remember right on on, on friday saturday and, and sunday maybe it's maybe it's not even that many um because i think it would ended up being like nine times a week which is just not um yeah you know, it's useful for something but you can't um, it's certainly not a commuter service if it doesn't run Monday or Tuesday and it's, it's just not that useful for like everyday things. So, um, yeah, I just kind of felt like 
it, it could be really useful, especially if it if it if it docked somewhere close to where you could pick up the Pinellas Trail or the Sun Sun Runner. I mean, it's not hard. It's not that hard to bike from the current location, but um, it's not super uh, convenient to walk from there to like the center of downtown. Um, so yeah, like like uh free frequency it'd be cool if it ran like once an hour maybe i don't know it's gonna cost a lot more but a lot more people would use it um and then yeah if, if like i think that the, the the jetty locate or the docking location in tampa is pretty good from what i've seen so yeah um yeah yeah something more central in st p and then more frequency well i'm i'm glad that you were spared um uh, running into pirates uh while you're here but <laughs> i was kind of looking forward to it i mean i think i could hold my own right i don't know because they're not real pirates right the, the swords are plastic yeah but but they are drunk still so yeah yeah but they you have to factor that in. I, I probably would be too though so yeah. balance uh, it out but but i have to say i i the cross bay ferry it's kind of a bummer you didn't get to ride it because it it is it is a really nice ride like it's very it's actually quite scenic, you know, uh, going across the bay. And then it does drop you off in downtown Tampa at a, an extremely right. convenient location, right? Right in downtown. Yep. So I do like that it is a downtown to downtown ferry service. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I agree with you on all, all points. Like when they moved the, the when they moved the the jetty, uh, I was, uh, I was really confused, right? I felt like, it, you know, I was like, oh, ridership's going to go down, I feel, you know? Yeah. Yeah. um because it's it's less visible right that's mm -hmm. another thing less visible so tourists see it less right and tourists are not going to see it where it is now yeah um but i i really i i really do hope that we that we ramp that up and I, there have been talks about uh purchasing a, f a ferry just for uh us to use because right now we basically hire a company from uh massachusetts to yeah to provincetown yeah 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 so yeah i heard they actually bring the ferries down yeah right? yeah yeah okay. yeah they bring the ferries down from and i think this year they were delayed because of like some ice storm or something uh -huh. <laughs> so yeah it would be nice if we got our own and and i i really hope that that we do because you know like you mentioned in your in your video um it, there's so much opportunity right we're surrounded by waterways like mm -hmm. we could be taking advantage of those and not have to sit an hour in traffic on 275 to get yeah. between yeah well not only that like you uh you know like if you look at the san francisco basis there are actually two different operators mm -hmm. there that that connect up to marin county or over the east bay um but there are lots of locations that might be useful for docking in the tampa bay region um i don't remember the names the names of all of them, but I was kind of looking um, because there are some job centers and 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 kind of like a um, oppor opportunity development areas that are developing now that could benefit from like having uh, having a location on the system where they can get to downtown St. Pete or downtown Tampa. Um, so 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 there's there there are probably even more. There's probably even more potential than than just connecting the downtowns, but that's definitely where you, you would want to start. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about St. Pete as sort of an arts city, um, which you also talked about in your video. Uh, and I was I was curious how you feel um, that plays into the the attractiveness attractiveness and livability of an urban center because it really has been. Um, Kind of an initiative of of the city to be more, very arts oriented, and it it it's it it's clear that it it's it's working because you 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 mentioned it in your video. Yeah, I mean, I think it's um, I think it's because every city has like museums and galleries, um, but it, it seems pretty clear that that there's a focus in Saint Pete on on cultivating and and attracting. Um, uh galleries and establishing museums i mean unfortunately i didn't get to visit any of these museums i was only able to like walk by them and try to get a sense of um kind of how they integrate into the urban environment so i went down to like where the dali museum is and um on central where the the chihuly museum is but even the, there are 
lots of smaller museums and galleries uh lots of places i went uh kind of kind of in in closer to to downtown um and that kind of combined with kind of felt like for 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 a central city in a a u.s metro area this size like um the the public art installations maybe jumped out at me a little more than they usually would in in a typical city um and yeah and just the uh just how um uh, just how prevalent just how prevalent museums were and how much um this the city uh was clearly putting effort into to like highlighting them and making them a focus and and uh and what's what's the there's also like the warehouse arts district i think to the to the west of um uh the gas plant district as well so there, there's kind of that piece too that you, you definitely get a sense of that knowledge of the um highlight their kind of established museums like like dolly or chihuly but but they're kind of um there's kind of an intentional function as an in incubator of of the local art scene too and so that really comes through when you when you um when you when you walk around that that kind of central spine area from downtown out to like grand central and we have a and we have a monthly art walk that is pretty large because it extends all the way down to the warehouse arts just district now um so yeah so yeah the city does coordinate sort of events and functions around that mm -hmm. yeah for sure and you know it's like on the art walk night, usually people bike on the Pinellas Trail because it connects to the Warehouse Arts District and mm -hmm. that six block area from 22nd Street South to 28th Street South has really seen a lot of development because of that, because like people have seen it and then people are like, oh, there are some opportunities here to like develop it further and kind of bring more housing here. Yeah. Um, it's all added to the fabric of the city as well. Oh yeah, and and, and arts, uh, especially the visual arts, are always, I don't know. And you can feel whatever way you want to feel about this, but they're almost always kind of like a gateway to like gentrification or whatever, whatever you want to call it, um, like increased property values. Like people want to go there because artists are cool, you know. <laughs> right? <laughs> artists they have this cachet, right? And and the, and they they make the neighborhoods look cool and edgy and then people with money want to move in there so maybe maybe unfortunate or or whatever but but it's a dynamic that that plays plays out in in a lot of u.s cities um so so i don't know so, so i guess it can it can cut both ways a little bit but i think overall it tends to be a, a plus uh we have like a couple of last questions for you one is what makes people feel safe to go car free that is missing in St. Pete. Hmm. Yeah, I think um we uh yeah, I I guess the way I would answer that question is um like transit frequency would be my first mm -hmm. thing. Because I, I guess if if you if you manage to live um like it's gonna be a lot easier to live car free if you're along the central spine going out downtown edge district grand central um because you've got um you've got the pinellas trail and the sun sun runner even though you know i would like the sun runner to have better frequency but um you know i i imagine like i haven't researched what the what the prevailing rents are in those areas i imagine they're higher mm -hmm. than average for the city um so a lot of the more affordable places, and this is true in like every city, right? A lot of the more affordable places are places where you, you do get the the buses that run every 30 or 60 minutes, um, which is not going to be conducive to um, being able to go car free. Um, and, and a lot of those neighborhoods are probably the ones that don't have like protected bike infrastructure that will connect them to like the Pinellas Trail or downtown or, or whatever the destinations are that they need to go um so so yeah just the um uh just just how how uh I and mean, again great great work on that central spine um with with the the bike and the transit infrastructure 
but for people out, who live outside of that, um, which I'm, I imagine is the large majority of St. Pete residents, um, yeah, it's it's going to be tougher until uh, until they're good good uh, biking. When I say biking, I, I really mean micro mobility. It can be scooters or whatever. Um, but those kinds of connections and transit connections that will get you to like a transfer at Grand Central or or um, or directly to downtown or whatever whatever other yeah you know, never never works or or goes downtown a lot so you know um but whatever the destinations are that's that's kind of what you need um for people to feel like they have the liberty to to you know make the make the choice to um get rid of their car we had so many questions to ask you but we are running <laughs> short on time and we want to be respectful of your time um I want to first thank you so much for 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 sitting here with us and talking about St. Pete really um in your and cities which is your your area's ex expertise um can you uh tell our listeners where they can find you um I mentioned Nebula earlier maybe you can uh you know give a little plug to uh what you do on Nebula as yeah. well Yeah yeah, I mean, the place most people are going to find me is is on YouTube, where you just put "city nerd" in the as like one word. It probably doesn't matter if you put it as one word or not. But if you put it in the search box, you'll find find my channel. And then Nebula is um, it's a streaming service, kind of more like a Netflix or a Hulu, but it's really um, it's been built from the ground up by uh, people people who. Are usually still on YouTube, um, but some people have migrated away from it. So, so it's kind of like an alternative platform mm -hmm. to YouTube um, for channels that focus on I don't know, often like urbanism or technology or culture, um, uh, to kind of have a place where they can um, they can they can ha they can uh, have all their videos available and then they're ad free and they're promotion free like like nobody's promoting product you, you upload a version of vid the video that's just clean that's just the video that doesn't have anything else in it so it's great for that but it is a subscription service right and so instead of yeah. getting it for free quote unquote on YouTube and having to watch ads or watch the watch the YouTuber like promote like razors or 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 VPNs or whatever then you just uh you just pay. I think it ends up being like two dollars and fifty cents a month, and you get to watch. I think there are like two hundred creators on there right now. That there's a lot of great stuff, I and mean, my stuff's okay, but there are better ones on there. So, um, but anyway, that, that's what Nebula is all about. So you can find my stuff on Nebula as well. Oh, well, awesome! Uh, I'm gonna check on Nebula now because two fifty is very affordable. That's like... yeah. I, I think it's like like it's thirty dollars a year. I think. Um, yeah, you can you can sign up for like a thirty dollar annual, or you can pay like three bucks a month. So you save like six bucks if you if you sign up for the annual. I think is what the deal is. All right. Well, thank you so much again. Thank you for being on our show. This is Car Free Conversations, um, and we were here with Ray Delahanty, um, city nerd. If you're listening to this on um, on the radio, you can find us uh, uh, online as well. If you if you look for us, we have a podcast online that you can find. Uh, and we'll be posting a video of this as well. Yes, thank you so much for joining us today.